Hey guys, so welcome to the second part of this chapter, chapter 2 forces and motion. We'll pick up from where we left off in the first part. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I'll leave the link in the description box below. So now we'll continue with 2.6, number 15, impulse. So impulse is equal to Ft. So F in this case is the force and T is the time interval. And impulse is also equals to mv minus mu. And actually you can derive this from the formula for impulsive force because as we've said before, formula for impulsive force is mv minus mu over t and since i is equal to ft so i is basically equal to mv minus mu over t multiplied by t so to get impulse you basically cancel out the t here and there you have it i equals to mv minus mu so m will be equal to mass v is equal to final velocity and u is equal to initial velocity so for any formula at all the unit is very important so the unit here is equal to ns because i is equals to ft the unit for f force is always newton and t is second so unit for impulse is either ms, ns, or kg ms negative one, because I've mentioned before that the unit for force is also kg ms negative two. So for impulse, it's force multiplied by time. So force unit is kg ms negative two times the unit for time is s. So from this, you will get kg ms negative one. So alternative unit for impulse is kg ms negative 1. Next, number 16 is the formula for impulsive force. And this is just a recap. So impulsive force is equal to mv minus mu over t. Unit can either be newton or kg ms negative 2. And as I've said before, this is important to remember for paper 1 because sometimes they'll test you on whether you can remember the other unit for force or not. So just remember this for paper 1. And why I did this recap for impulsive force is because we're talking about the relation between the variables in impulsive force also. So for example, F is inversely proportional to T. F, okay, look at the formula first. F equals to mv minus mu over t. Because all these are multiplied, so all the things which are multiplied, it is directly proportional to. But for F and t, it's the relationship between those two are essentially divide. So when it's divide, it's inversely proportional to. So... F is directly proportional to mass, F is directly proportional to final velocity, and F is directly proportional to initial velocity. The only thing that it is inversely proportional to is the time. And this is very important in the application of, like, let's say dropping your phone onto the floor. Let's say if you drop it on the sofa, then there's more time of contact. So when there's more time of contact, the impulsive force will decrease. So when the time of contact increase, the force will decrease. And so your phone is less likely to crack. This is also applied in long jump and also in high jump. So in long jump, there's a pit of sand that the athlete will jump onto and land on. So when the athlete lands on the sand, the time of contact will increase. And so the impulsive force will decrease decreasing the pain on the legs as well so this is how the impulsive force and time and their relationship comes into play so next number 18 we have weight which is equal to mg 
so w is equals to weight and m is equal to mass and g is equal to acceleration due to gravity so the value for g can either be 9.8 or 10 ms negative 2 so mat no matter which type of acceleration it is it is the unit is always in ms negative 2 so please remember that usually when the value of g is not given we'll use 10 instead so the unit for weight is newton or more commonly we just write a capital letter n and number 19 if you have a pulley system the formula to use is t minus mg equals to ma so t represents the tension m is the mass g is gravitational acceleration and a is acceleration So unit for tension is also Newton, it's the same unit as the force. So whenever there's a pulley system, you just have to remember that the tension is always directed towards the pulley. So if it's not labeled, then the tension is always directed towards the pulley and the unit for tension is Newton. And the formula that you would use is T minus mg equals to ma. So please remember that as well. Next, number 20, we have vectors. So let's say you have a graph here, and this is the force given. And this is theta, this is alpha. So how would you find the horizontal line? So for the horizontal line, which is this one right here, um, okay, to find this, you will take F cos alpha. So how I remember this is because, like, imagine this line and this line. Once you close this line, you will get the resultant vector uh, resultant force so just remember that close resembles cos so f cos alpha will be your horizontal line or another way would be f sine the opposite um, angle which is theta so there's two ways to find the horizontal line and then next let's let's talk about the vertical line which is this one right here so this is the vertical line and same theory if you close the line which means you close to here and close sounds the same as cos so f cos theta or it can also be s f sine alpha so these are the ways that you can find the resultant vector from the force that is given here so let's say you're given like um, this force is 50 newton and you're supposed to find the force for the horizontal line so if you're given the angle of alpha is 45 degree so to find the horizontal line you can simply take the force 50 cos 45 and you'll get the resultant vector for the horizontal line so that's how it works and then number 21 for object on inclined plane r will be equals to mg cos theta and f friction the frictional force will be equals to mg sine theta and r is the normal reaction force which opposes gravity So similarly, you just have to apply this theory to solve this. And mg is usually stands for weight. 
So, for example, if you have an object, the arrow directed down below will be mg or the weight, and there's r right above, and it is the normal force that opposes gravity. So that's how it works. Next, number 22, W is equals to Fs. W is also equal to Fs cos theta. If you, are, if you have a condition like this, then you have to find using the cos. And in this case, W is equal to work done. F is equal to force and S is displacement in direction of force. So very important thing to remember here is that S is the displacement in the direction of the force. So make sure that the displacement is actually in the direction of the force or you can multiply it. If it's not in the direction of the force, as seen in the graph here, you can use either cos or sine to find the force in the direction. So theta is the angle between the force and direction of displacement. So very important, the SI unit for work is Joule. So number 23, W is also equals to MGH. So these two are used in different cases. The formula in number 22 is used when the object is moved horizontally. And for number 23, it is used when the object is moved upwards or downwards, basically over a vertical distance. So mass will be, m will be equal to mass, g will be equal to gravitational acceleration, and the value is fixed. And h will be the height in meter. So very important here, the height here is in meter. So if you get the height in km, convert it to meter first before doing anything. And so the unit for work is always joule. Next, number 24, potential energy. So potential energy is represented as E and there's a small p at the side and it is equal to mgh as well. So m is equal to mass, g is equal to gravitation, gravitational acceleration, which is either 9.8 or 10 ms negative 2, and h is equal to height. So energy, the unit for energy is joule again. And 25, we have kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is represented as E with a small letter K, with a small K on the side. And it is equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. m is mass, and v is velocity. And the unit for energy is always joule, regardless of what type of energy it is. So this brings us to number 26, <clears throat> when in certain equations and in certain questions, both potential energy and kinetic energy are involved, you can actually equate these two together. So EK, A, EK equals to EP, and so 1 over 2 mv squared will be equals to mgh. And this way you can find whatever you want to find. So Memorize the equi the formula for potential energy, E equals to mgh, and also for kinetic energy, 1 over 2 mv square. And how you want to solve problem is to list down all the variables that you have first. And if you see that you have variables more than what you have in kinetic energy, 
then try to recall the formula for potential energy as well and you can equate them to each other to cancel out a few factors and eventually find the answer. So next we have 27. The formula for power is work done over time. And work done is equal to Fs, which is the force, multiplied by displacement in the direction of the force over time. So F is equal to force. S is the displacement in direction of force. And T is the time. And power can also mean MGH over T where m is equal to mass, g is equal to gravitational acceleration, and h is equal to height. So it depends on whether the object is moving horizontally or vertically. So if the object is moving horizontally, you will use the first formula which is fs over t, and if the object is moving vertically then you can use the second formula which is mgh over t so in either way the unit for power is what which is equal to joule per second as well the reason for this is because the work done is always measured in joule and time is in second so the unit for power can either be watt or joule per second. Next formula that we have, number 28, is P equals to Fv. So P in this case is equal to power, F equals to force, and V equal to velocity. This is another formula for power. So you have to apply it accordingly, according to the quantities that are provided um, in the question. You have to figure out which formula to use. So it's best if you can remember all the formulas, then you can pick out the ones that you actually need to use. Next, efficiency will be equals to PO over PI times 100%. So PO is equal to the energy output and Pi is equal to the energy input. So efficiency is rarely 100% because the energy is lost. So the reason is because energy is lost. So the purpose of this formula is to, just to find out how efficient something is and then Number 30, we have F equals to Kx. F is the force. K is the constant. And constant, remember, has no unit. And X is the extension of the spring. So then the unit of K will be equal to Nm negative 1. So the reason for this is from... This formula F equals to Kx, make K the subject, so K will be equals to F over X. So the formula for, I mean the unit for force is Newton, and the unit for extension of spring is in meter, and so the unit for constant is Nm negative 1. And next, Number 31, and this formula is used when limited information is given. When limited information is given, you can use either one of these two formula. The first one is F1 over F2 will be equal to X1 over X2. The second one is M1 over M2 is equal to X1 over X2. So, these are the two formulas that you can use and you have to use based on the variables given in the question again. F is equal to force. 
watts in newton x is equal to extension of the spring this is in meter and m is equal to mass which is in kg and so from here we'll get number 32 work done is also equal to 1 over 2 fx and number 33 work done is also equal to 1 over 2 kx squared so the unit for both is still joule in this case but this is used when it involves spring and so as usual f stands for force X stands for extension of spring and K stands for constant. So those are all the formulas in chapter 2 and thanks for watching.